Welcome back to the Quilters Guild of Ireland um, home project, which is supported by the Keep Well campaign in the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland. This is our sixth block and seventh video. And these blocks are all um, to help show you how to sew together the, the patterns that we're providing. So we'll provide nine patterns all together. Three will be houses, three will be trees, and three will be paths and gardens. And the idea is that we want you to make at least one block and the block should finish, should, should be a 10 inch block, which would be 10 and a half inches before it's sewn to the next block. So it should measure 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches when we get it. And these blocks, these blocks ideally will be made from batiks. If you don't have access to batiks, please don't let that stop you from making one. Make a block with whatever you have. And every block that we receive, the maker of that block will put the name, their name in a hat and we'll be having a big raffle towards the end of the month. Um, the quilts we make with the blocks we'll then use to raise or to support i should say um women's shelters and mental health so um please make something and it it doesn't have to be complicated the the blocks are getting a little bit more difficult as we go along but the first three are, are pretty simple and um even a beginner or someone with very little knowledge of sewing should be able to do them and call and if you haven't done much sewing and you want to make one and you need a bit of help call on someone who has done a bit of patchwork the the only important rule with patchwork is we use a quarter inch seam rather than a i think it's a five eighths inch seam that they use in dressmaking so our seam allowance is quite small compared to other sewing but it's not rocket science and um there's there's loads and loads and loads of people who'd be happy to help if you want to try this out so anyways going on the this block which is the six block that we're we're showing on video is um a, is my take on paths and gardens so the idea is that the the shapes on the outer edges are the gardens and the shapes in the center are the paths so um feel free to go mad with the colors use whatever other colors you like i decided i'd kind of go with a pinky theme um you know nothing nothing subtle here anyways um to, these are this is a really simple block to construct so you first sew together this strip you then sew together this strip, you sew together these pieces in the center, and then you sew together the three sets. So I'm going to scoot over to the sewing machine and I'm going to try to gracefully take the camera over without causing any undue seasickness and make some little tiny adjustments so you can see the sewing machine. And as before, I'm using a pretty, pretty um, standard sewing machine which only has a straight stitch um my stitch length is two but 2.5 is fine if that's what your machine does and i'm using a 50 weight orofill thread in taupe you can use whatever thread you have if you only have white or black that's fine use it just make a block and the um i would advise as i said before that you lay out what you're going to sew so you know where you're going. So I'm going to lay these all in a row. Of course, one is going to fall over the edge. So I'm going to start at the top and sew these together. The beauty of batiks is they don't really have a definite right or wrong side. Um, I apologize, my camera is getting in the way a little bit. I'm actually going to move it in further so I can get my arm around here. I'm going to line up this corner and make sure this whole edge is lined up. And then I'll take it over to the sewing machine and sew this with what is officially known as a scant quarter inch. I'll then take the next two pieces, which are these two, and I'm going to put those under the sewing machine. So before I move anything else, I'm going to snip this first one off and I'm just going to finger press it very gently. And this one went at the top and whoops, sorry, that goes at the top and then the next one goes here. 
So I actually need the next one before I can do any more sewing. So I will take this off and again I'm just going to very gently finger press it and that's the order. And then I'm now saying that if these go out of order it doesn't much matter because they um, they're just random colors put together. So this little piece that I keep adding to the front and cutting off the back um, is a little, I suppose, leader, leader strip. And it, um, it means I don't get any little thread tangles at the beginning of my seams. And I'm not, I don't have any long bits of threads hanging from my pieces, which is a real bugbear for me. So um, I like to think that I do this because I'm a little bit lazy and a little bit stingy and I'm also so I'm not wasting as much thread as I would if I'm cutting off a big long strip of thread so I will give this a gentle finger press as well and that's the first strip sewn I'm now going to grab the second strip so this is the top so i put them in a slightly different order on the second side it doesn't matter you could use the same order if you like things to be symmetrical um i do like things to be symmetrical generally but i thought it might be more interesting if i didn't if i put them in a different order but do as you like it's um completely up to you your color choices are completely up to you there are no hard and fast rules here other than the blocks should be Ten and a half inches unfinished to finish at ten inches. Oops. And then take the next two pieces. And we will add the bit on the bottom then. As I've said before, most batiks don't have a definite right and wrong side. So I would say, and, and, and actually even fabrics that do have a right and wrong side, use the side that has the color you want. So I've seen loads of quilts where people have used the wrong side of the fabric as the front of the fabric, and it can be quite effective. Sometimes you don't get quite the right shade you want. So flip it around, look at it, see what colors you like and um and do as suits you i think that um it's the the rules we were bound by in the past are a little bit more flexible now okay so that's the second strip for the sides and now I'm going to get my long skinny strips. And the only reason this block is a little bit more difficult than the last Paths and Gardens block is because there's more pieces and it's and they're small. So like this is quite a long skinny piece. So you do have to be pretty good. Your seam allowance needs to be fairly accurate. Um otherwise it won't um it won't go together well. So I've sewn a couple of pieces and then I go to the end. And I just match up that corner as well, and I'm going to hold that with my finger, trying not to stretch it as I'm holding it. And when you're sewing these together, um, sew at a speed that's comfortable for you. So if you looked, if you saw that sewing and thought, oh my God, that was far too fast. I could never do that. Don't sew that fast. If you like to sew at a nice, even, slow space, uh, slow pace, that is absolutely fine. Um, do, do what suits you best. So again, three stitches and three or four stitches, I should say. 
and I'm going to match up the two bottom the bottom corner and and with my left hand I'm going to make sure that the edges are lined up and I'll sew this one a little bit more slowly the biggest danger with sewing fast is that you make mistakes more quickly um, something else to be aware of and this is something that I know I do quite regularly is when you get to the bottom don't allow yourself to veer off in one direction or the other um, I'm guilty of this as I said I do it all the time and I have to keep reminding myself not to do it so I'm kind of um, this is the first piece I put together and I had the greens I think towards the outer edge so I'm going to just press that my finger and I'm going to press this in the same direction so I'm going to pull this piece over if um, as a handy tip when you lay out your pieces take a picture of it with your phone most of us have cameras in our phones now and it's really easy to take a quick picture and then if you have any confusion about where something goes you can reference your picture again I'm going to do a couple of stitches and then line up this bottom corner and you can see there and then make sure all these edges are lined up and nothing is hanging over one side or the other Is the center paths and here's the first set of gardens to go next to it so I'm going to sew that to the edge and as before I'll match up that corner you could pin this and just pin it every seam and um, and then you don't have to pay as much attention when you're sewing but I find by holding it and kind of keeping an eye on it as I'm sewing, I'm kind of aware of what's going on. So I've got lots of seam allowances down this edge and I don't on this edge. So I'm actually going to press it. I'm going to press the seam allowance so it goes under this piece that has that has no seam allowances or no seams going through it. It just makes it a little bit tidier. Um, if I if there are seams on both sides, then I might I might think about how I was pressing a bit differently. But generally I'll press to the space that has the view of seams. So Oops, there's the other side ready to sew on. So I'm going to flip this on and sew the other side. And again, I'll line this up. And then I'll line up the bottom corner. Which you can see there as those two edges are matched. And I'm going to hold that with my index finger and thumb of my right hand and then I'm going to check the edges as I'm sewing with my left hand and my little tab has got caught because I have too many long threads on it so I need to trim that up and
think it's time this one went into the scrap bin. It's looking fairly messy. So I'll open this up. And again, I'm going to press to the side that has fewer seams. And very gently finger press that. And then you can turn over and you can see how the seam allowances are pressed. Um, I'm going to take this to the iron and then do a stay stitch around it. But I've done that with a few of the videos, so I don't think you need to see it. Um, it's just that the stay stitching will prevent any of these seams from pulling apart. So the... Actually, I apologize. I will do the stay stitching. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to iron this. Okay. <clears throat> As I explained before, um, the stay stitching, I do this on blocks where I may not be using them straight away or quilts that I may not be quilting straight away. And it prevents the seams from pulling apart because we don't use back stitches. Sometimes these seams can pull apart at the edge. So by doing this little stitch all the way around the edge of the piece, and it's only in about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, um, it just holds all those seams together and it prevents it from just stretching or distorting or pulling apart. And um, I would not normally do this on blocks, but if I was sending a block away where it was then going to be handled, yeah, I probably would because it'll just prevent anything from pulling apart. It also allows me to make sure my seam allowances are going in the directions that I want and that they're all tidy. Um, um, that's my train of thought there. Sorry about that. As I said, it's only in about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. You don't want to go in, or sorry, not an eighth or a quarter, an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch. You don't want to go in a quarter of an inch because then this, this stay stitch line may be seen when the block is sewn to the next block. And you don't really want to see a line of thread. So um, just do it at the very, very edge of the fabric. I actually lengthen my seam or my stitch length a tiny, tiny bit, um, which makes it go a wee bit faster. Okay. Oops. So you can see, whoops, there's a stay stitch along the edge, that little tiny line of sewing. And this, if I give this a tug now, those blocks cannot be pulled apart. So that's the benefit of doing that. Um, there's my paths and gardens, my second paths and gardens block. So have fun with this. Um, enjoy it. Talk to other quilters. Talk to people who might like to do a bit of sewing. This doesn't have to be done by machine. It can be done by hand as well. Just make a quarter inch seam. If you're, um, if you don't know what a quarter inch seam is, contact us and we'll try to explain it. And um, if you make some blocks or a block, contact us at the QGI at gmail.com or contact us on Facebook, the Quilters Guild of Ireland, and we will tell you who to send the blocks to. Okay. Thanks a million. Bye.